What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest of cybersecurity news, as well as we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who have made to the other side of the proverbial firewall. I had to, <laughs> I had to take a breath in between. <laughs> welcome to Wednesday's episode. So Monday and Tuesday are our topics, Wednesday's discussion. Uh, Thursdays, uh, we're going to do a throwback where we talk about, or we go back to the archive, right? We have over 516 episodes where we can go back and tie things that are related to this week. Uh, things we talked about in the past because uh, everything is uh, uh, history repeats itself apparently so, <laughs> so definitely tune in for that and then Fridays everything else movies books games holidays all that good stuff but without further ado I'll give it to Shannon all right everybody so this article is actually from ABC, abc7news.com written by Stephanie Sierra um, and the title of this one is Oakland man says fraudulent accounts opened home purchase in his name after city's ransomware hack oh I hate to see this right so this goes into kind of like what we talked about before, right? Like this is the second and third order effects and the things that can happen after you have um, these ransomware attacks, right? And this is from a man in Oakland, right? So this happened 10 months ago, I think it was. And so <laughs> this guy says on the credit report, there's credit cards that should have been closed that now open with balances of 17 and $30,000, right? So his big gripe, his big gripe with the, the city of Oakland is that he wasn't notified in a timely fashion, I guess you could say, right, when this all went down. So he was kind of none the wiser, but he started having different things happen to him, right? So um, he started getting like those emails and those calls about things, uh, you know, about uh, refinancing. Was it refinancing? I think is what it was. And then uh, some other stuff. And then he started having uh, stuff on his credit report credit cards that should have been closed that were now open with balances and like i said 17 and thirty thousand dollars like that's a lot you know what i mean to have in credit for something you're not even tracking right um but again he he says he has he has he has no idea how many accounts have been opened in his name right is what he's telling uh the abc abc7 news team as they as they do an investigation on this and actually they're the ones that kind of notified him that hey all this stuff was going on but again like even though he was he was Getting indications that stuff was going on, it just seems like he just may not have been savvy enough to to um, kind of combat this, right? So like different things you can do, like you can put a lock on your social security number, right? Um, to where any, if anybody runs anything for your social security number, you get a notification for it. So like things like that, right? Your life locks, right? And I know we joke about life lock on here a lot, right? Like it's it's one of those anytime anything happens like oh you're getting life lock right but like it is a useful tool right in preventing things like this from happening it's just that it's offered all the time because this happens way easier than it should right and some of the stuff that happened for this guy was a little weird right so like he was getting um like bills for his water and sewage that were like two thousand dollars that were from all the way across the country so this guy's in oakland and this was happening somewhere in the new england area right and he's like, why, why does this, like his questioning is, is kind of like, why does this not raise, um, you know, any type of flags? Like you see where my address is, why would I be doing this all the way over there? Not to say it can't be done, right? Maybe he's got a business or something like that, that he's starting up, but yeah. So it, it, this is weird, right? And this is, this is why notification when these types of things happen and being, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say more transparent, but offering more guidance um, to these types of things um, and how people can protect themselves is valuable, right? Because again, this is almost a year later, this stuff is happening to him. So it happened 10 months ago. He's getting the stuff now. He's getting emails from Best Buy about kitchen installations. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, opening up, uh, trying to apply for mortgages when he's a renter. You know what I mean? Like this is this is going to be hard to undo for this gentleman. You know what I'm saying? And it's just, I, I I don't I don't know why, especially when it comes to these cities, right? Like especially as a city, it's not like you're in it for profit, right? Like yes, it may be a little embarrassing that you that you got hacked or whatever, right? But what it's going to lead to is in instances like this where people are going to start suing the city. This was going to happen. They're going to be like, you did not notify us in a timely manner. And we talk about this all the time, like putting time frames whenever these types of things happen. And, and the government is working towards that. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, especially when it comes to like utilities and things like that, things that that uh, that affect the, the the constituents for people that have voted uh, these people in the office. You know what I mean? This is what you're supposed to be doing to protect them. But this guy's going to have a hard, hard trail ahead of him. Or no, I shouldn't say a trail path ahead of him. Um, 
dealing with this right so it, this guy i i feel for him but um I, and, and i don't want to i don't want to victim blame here either right but there should have been um other things he thought about when this was happening as well right and maybe he just didn't know right maybe he just didn't know so like i was talking about with like the the social security number lock right um when you started when you start getting emails and things like this don't just write them off as ah that's weird you know what i mean like in this day and age it seems like um anybody watching any type of news or on any type of social media sees these types of things happen and they should be doing something about it you know what i mean but um even the mayor of Oakland uh, was kind of, uh, he, he didn't give a straight answer. So when when this, uh, they call them themselves the I team, the AB7, ABC7 News uh, team is the I team. I guess that's an investigation team. Um, the Oakland mayor, Sheng Tao, um, they asked him about the thousands of people that are effect, impacted by the breach. And they said he didn't get a straight answer at the time. And again, I realized the look of this, right? Like it's not a good look for whatever reasons, but this is what you learn from. And this is why you should notify people that these things are going on. Because again, like, if you are worried about keeping your job, wouldn't it be better that you, you just outright with them and say, hey, this is what happens. I'm going to fix this. I'm going to try to do right by you for this. We're going to do better. But yeah, this guy's got he's got a path ahead of him to try to undo this because trying to convince um, some of these people <laughs> that are uh, that uh, what, what do you call them? You're, you're a debtor, like the people you owe the money to. Right. Like, I don't know. Right. Like, trying to convince them it wasn't you like they ain't trying to hear it. Right. Like, hey, you got 17 and 30,000 we want to get paid. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, this is, this, this sucks for this guy, but um, this is why it's better to let people know the different things they can do um, when things like this happen. Right. And and the city of Oakland should have got out in front of this is, is my thinking on this, but what's your thoughts on it, Ryan? Yeah. He's got the, the lawyer up. He probably already has, right. It's, it's probably already going to be a suit of some sort because he's going to need the funds to, to, to not only, pay people to help him expunge expenses from his credit but uh also maybe pay some of this stuff i don't know to be honest with you um it it, it is i've i've never heard of such a big case like this before like typically it's smaller stuff right like somebody is uh taking money out of your account or they are opening stuff up or they buy a boat or something like that or like like let's see the appliance installs things of that nature but for all of it to hit this dude had a plus credit and they've ruined it <laughs> you know what i mean like it's a shame um because yeah he uh, trying to buy a house in his name multiple credit cards thirty thousand dollars because like like he said like something should have tripped at some point like they should have said like hey this location and the social and all this other stuff doesn't match um so it is kind of weird as well for them to continue to open up things in his name um without finally hitting some kind of cap right like this person has too much debt he has too much open lines of credit his, uh, his account is because i know they don't do it any longer but it used to be you couldn't have too many hard pulls on your credit because that would be bad as well but that's also a red flag, right? Um, so maybe he didn't have, maybe he's never been uh, hit with anything before. So he doesn't have life lock or credit karma or any other stuff. So maybe he's one of the people who it, this hit him later in life when he, you know, he had all this stuff, all his ducks in a row, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, he's going to have the lawyer up to uh, to have a, a team to help him go out there and uh, uh, reverse a lot of these things because he, he just simply simply can't get a new social and move on with his life that would be the easy solution um, but yeah he's going to need people to help him to overturn these things and unfortunately the bad guys got away with it like so that they're run, running around with whatever they, they purchased or bought or sold or what have you scot free for now uh, but Oakland's going to have to pay up and he's probably not the only person it's happening to he's the only person that they noticed it's happening to um, but yeah I've never seen it be so many different things it's usually like even if um let's say your credit card is skimmed or, or, or something like that your bank will hit you up if they see too many fraudulent charges like hey is this you are you in maryland right now you're like no <laughs> i'm in california um so for it to happen to him so many times over the that 10 months is kind of is kind of odd like these people are either really good at what they're doing or the the creditors that they hit up are very poor at security uh, and they simply just did not pick up on it. So, or both. So it's pretty unfortunate. So uh, hopefully, I think his name was uh, Dietrich Warmack. So hopefully Dietrich Warmack gets his life uh, back in order fairly soon. And he wins whatever he needs to win off of this because he needs to be compensated for, because uh, it's not his fault. Like 
uh, the rampancy may maybe there should have been some flags that were tripped or whatever what what happened, but the the origin is the city messed this up and they did not notify him in quickly enough time. And as we can see, uh, the sec is holding people to task. So like you can see that the reason that they probably don't want to talk about it is because of again hits were roll and then like sizzles are now going uh, to to court to defend themselves. Like it's getting regulations really beating people up. So maybe they're trying to hide something because they just simply did not know the extent of the breach, or they're trying to uh, cushion the, the the blow because uh, it's it's more um, it's more in, impactful than uh, they're leading people to believe. So uh, there's a lot of red tape and and things of that nature. People you know figuring out what their next move is <laughs> in government when this all comes to uh, to fruition. So it's kind of unfortunate. So I don't know. We got to just stay vigilant. Like every now and then, check your credit report. Uh, you know, if you don't have services like Credit Karma or LifeLock, you might want to look into them uh, just to protect yourself. Because like Mr. Cooper or uh, Xfinity, like these things are T-Mobile. We talk about them all the time. Uh, th these breaches happen quite frequently. And like now I'm scared. I'm, I'm going to go check my stuff. Like <laughs> somebody running around the boat my, with my name on it. <laughs> Can't have that happen, right? Um, so you just got to be careful. You got to name it. <laughs> Ryan's inattentiveness is the right. <laughs> <laughs> it's rubbing it in my face. So, like, yeah, it's it's very scary stuff, right? Especially for the people who are who are uh, getting their their life in order. Like, if you have really bad credit, you shouldn't have to worry about these things. But you still, can have things happen to you, unfortunately. But they'll be smaller. Uh, but for people out there who are, you know, um, who have a home or who are trying to get a home, like something like this could be devastating um because now it's going to mess you up for years right you can say hey i would like to you know finally purchase my my home lived american dream or whatever and then they're like no nah, you already have two houses you're like what <laughs> two um so you just have to be careful um everybody should be monitoring their their credit and what have you and, and nobody's exempt right you could be a cybersecurity expert and they can still get you uh indirectly by whatever means like someone else has your data and then they, they lose it and then now you're in this this mess so uh, more power to you, uh, Dietrich Wormack. Good luck out there. And then hopefully everybody else in Oakland who's been impacted by this, who doesn't know yet, will quickly find out. So that way, get their stuff in order as well. So uh, definitely continue to tune in throughout the week. Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesday, discussion. Uh, Thursdays will be a throwback. So in case you watch this out of order. Then Friday, everything else, movies, books, games, all that good stuff. Um, hit up all the websites that go by our name. You can meet me personally. I'm at Ry Ry Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy. You can find me on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, Twitter, and Threads. Stay safe, stay secure. Happy New Year.